Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to learn how we can add product to the cart using Ajax. Of course, we are not using jQuery in this video series. We are going to use the default Fetch API in the browser, which all browsers support at the time of this recording. And also, we are going to use AlpineJS. You will see how easy and clean we can add product to the cart using Ajax. So let's dive deep. In the previous video, we learned how we add product to the cart. So in this video, let's make it an Ajax request. If I come to the code in here, this is my product form. And as I said, this quantity, I'm going to complete it in the next video. But for now, let's leave it like this. This is where we define our uh, component in AlpineJS. We're using X data. So if you haven't watched previous videos, please watch them. This is our component in here. This is the product form. And this is the button that we have in here. This is dynamic buttons. Okay. Now, when someone click in this, let me like add an event in here. So first of all, we change the type from submit to button. So it shouldn't submit the form. It is a button or we can prevent the form also, but let's make this as a button in here. Now, if someone click on this, I am going to run, I'm going to call a function. I'm going to call at to court function, something like this. So this is the function that should be called where we define this function for now. Let's directly put it in here. But in the future video, I'm going to uh, refactor the whole thing and we are going to extract extra JavaScript in its own component. You will see how nice and clean it will become for now. Let's add the, the function add to cart in here and what this add to cart is going to do. So, you know, you can define a function in here using AlpineJS. This function will call when we click in the add to cart button. For now, let's console.log. Adding to cart. So to see if everything is working, I will save it. Let's come back to our team. I'm going to refresh. Of course, it's not adding anything to the cart but we make sure it is working fine. Add to cart, yes, the function is firing. Everything is fine. Now, um, here is the thing. There is two way we can send data as the Ajax request. We can create an object, put the variant ID and quantity, and send it to Shopify, right? Shopify cart, that is one way. The second way is we serialize our form. Behind this button is a form. It is called product form. We can serialize it. Whatever data inside this one will be serialized. Serialize is a function used in jQuery, but we can use it currently like browser can support like um, using the new form method, new form class, you can serialize a form. This is a better approach. As I said, either you can create a, it's your own object and pass it, or you can serialize the form. I will serialize the form. The, the, like there is, there are many reasons I can tell you right now that serializing the form is the way to go. I have seen a lot of team developers they create their own object. In the future, there there are a lot of more problems. If someone add a let's say a meta field or a, a property in here, uh, not meta field, a property, then custom object will not pick that property unless you go and write uh, modify your custom object. But if you write a hidden property in here, serializing the form will do the trick. That's why if you have a subscription inside this form, then that will work also. Those are the things that uh, that's good about serializing the form. I have worked with many different clients, so I know what are the problems that comes in the future. For now, let's serialize the form. How do we do that? It is not very difficult. First of all, we have to be able to pick this form in here. And above this, I'm going to let um, just creating a variable. I will call it form data. Now, if I check out uh, the documentation of like new form data, it accepts a form in here. Now, I can auto complete this using the <laughs> auto completion of what is this I'm using? Copilot. But here is the thing. We can either use document.query and get the product form, which is coming in here. It is a unique ID that is passed through the form. This is working fine. This is great document.query selector. But instead of this, let's use Alpine method of querying a form. In Alpine.js, you will use uh, refs. Refs are like a reference to the form. If I come to the documentation of Alpine, 
then the xref this is how you define you define an xref in here to an element give it a unique name and then using these refs you can access it you can modify it you can do anything to that this is much better now i will tell you in the future video why is, is it better than document that query selector for now stick with this check it out how do i pass that x ref in the form the same way that you put, put these uh, custom properties in here custom attributes so you can say x data type instead of this let's write an x ref do you think it will work it should let's try it now i'll come here and i'll call it product form underscore form hyphen form whatever you name it it will work just fine as soon as it is a unique key now let's come here let me just refresh it um, even if we have an error i'm just trying to make sure everything works in here uh, the form that we have in here it has an x ref of product form great now in here let's pass that using alpine.js you can just say dollar sign refs it is not jquery we can say product underscore form the other thing is like you can check if the product form exists or not but for now since it is here it should exist but for in the future we are going to add this, those conditions also we pass the form and it is going to uh, use this uh, form data to serialize the form for us now if you console the log console log this form data it should have the data for the form it may not display it but it should have it now let's refresh it coming back here let's click on add to cart and this is the form data object that we have in here now whatever is inside this product id quantity whatever should be passed so let's um, know that you have here let's run like this they send an ajax request to shopify if you come to the documentation of shopify for the cart um, api reference at the time of this recording it is under ajax api reference cart in here they have multiple examples using jquery but if i scroll down or you can yeah if i scroll down this is an example using the fetch api so here is how you do you send a fetch request the meta should be post and it should it accept the header that the data is json since we don't have a json we don't have to put the header at all this is where they define the form data for us form data is ready all we have to do is put it in the body that's all we need let's copy this type this code in here only this part and let's put it instead of this i can use using copilot i can write a comment so it, it will send the ajax request warning but here is how it works we don't need the header as i said because we are not sending an a json instead of like json stringify we have to just form data and now it should work just fine right and if you pass a json in the header it is not going to work it's going to like um through an error of data was not sent because it is not a json if i save it for now let's give it a try let's come here for now let's check out our card it is empty and let's refresh our product page so it grab all the latest changes cool let's add it to the card we don't see any feedback but if i could go to the card and refresh it we see the product is added to the card okay cool that's fine now how do we define the feedback when we say then we return the json in here now we should put another if another then in here that then this time we can grab the json information you can say card you can say anything like oh, okay it just threw an error so we can say response in here again the same as above and if i console dot log response let's see what will happen it should response the card object that we have the same way that you see in the api they say if you send this request this is the response that you will get we should get the same response let's come here in the product page let's refresh it now clean up everything let's add to the card it add to the card and this is our card now no like discounted price and everything is in here that is how it works like literally we add it to the cart and refreshing the page it will add like, increase the quantity now our job is if 
that our job is to do is we have to of course refactor this in here if it is success like if the response is okay what we can do is we can open the slide card from here a slide card will open and it should have the latest like information on the card that is in the next videos but for now let's clean up this a little bit that's what we do in the next video we'll clean up and of course we are going to connect this uh, what do you call quantity a modifier also this one should be also working currently no matter how many quantity i add in here oops what is this on oh, these are the issues that we have to fix in the next video and if i say nine it is not going to add nine product to the car it is just adding one product to the car that is what we will fix in the next video and also we will refactor the form we will see how we can create alpine component using single file javascript so i hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video